Ivan, excited to have you with us today. Could you please introduce yourself? Thank you, Maria. Thanks. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, my name is Yvonne and I'm an investment principal at Robert Bosch Venture Capital. And since it's so long, we always say RBVC. Um, and this means um, I do actually and eventually executing deals in two startups, investments um, in North America, RBVC. Um, we also are investors in Zapata Computing. Um, so, um, full disclosure. And um, so our role is actually to be the early warning system for Bosch. Um, means we are looking into new topics um, and to you know, the impact um, of, for example, next generation computing, um, such as quantum computing for the industry and for our company. Um, and like many others of you here, um, I have also a background in physics. Um, and actually a little bit about my career path, because as a physicist becoming a venture capitalist, it's not very usual, but it's actually quite common. Um, I joined Bosch um, in Germany um, as a quality engineer. This was my first role. I went from an, being an engineer, becoming a manager. I went also to engineering. And then I became the responsible director for quality management and methods in a Bosch subsidiary. Uh, and this was still a tiny company with you know less than 100 employees. And it could, I could already feel a little bit how it is to work in a smaller company in an agile environment. Um, this was very exciting. I came to US um, five years ago actually to start here a innovation hub, bigger divisions. And three years ago, I got the chance to, um, to join the venture capital team. And since I was working with startups already um, with, with the innovation group, um, I was really, really excited to become a venture capitalist and work with startups. Um, thank you. As I understand it, RBVC is uh, one of the forerunners for corporate venture capital, at least in Europe. Um, for audience members that might be unfamiliar with the world of investment, can you briefly describe what is venture investing and perhaps highlight the difference between venture capital and corporate venture capital? Yes, sure. So, yeah, I mean, venture capital is around already for a longer while, I think since maybe the 60s or, or 50s um, of, the 90s, of the 20th century. And it's all about investing in small, agile startups, companies, which are disrupting an industry or disrupting a, a business area um, with new technology or with a new business model. Um, as a venture capital investor, you invest money and you get equity in return. It's like a private investment in small companies. Um, there are institutional VCs or so-called financial VCs and they predominantly um, invest for financial return, um, investing other people's private money. Um, and there are the corporate venture capitals where like corporations like Bosch and I think Intel Capital was one of the very, very large ones um, starting 30, 30 years ago, investing into startups also for a strategic reason, and but also for financial. There is like everything in between, between being totally strategic and RBVC. We are more financially focused, like an institutional VC, but of course we want to see a strategic fit to Bosch, to the corporation. And, and the thing is that corporate venture or exists at least at, you know, at Bosch is that we are kind of the early warning system for the corporation. And we also want to open the corporation to work with startups and to embrace what we call open innovation, external innovation, like, you know, working with you guys at Zapata or other startups, um, and to, to, to accelerate our own innovation activities as a large corporations, because I mean, large corporations can be um, um, slower than, you know, small agile startups, and therefore it's very beneficial for us to work with them. Yeah. So 
I read that you and your team are assessing approximately 2,000 startups per year, which is very impressive. Um, in the last 10 years or so, you have been investing in about 50 or 60 of those companies that you have assessed. Um, so that makes me wonder, as an investor, how do you assess uh, whether a startup is a good fit for you in, in terms of both the investment, but also the strategic fit that you were just mentioning? Yeah, so first of all, it's a lot of work. Um, and because, you know, as you mentioned, these two to 3,000 startups we are evaluating each year are already like there's already a likelihood for a strategic fit to, to the corporation because there are like thousands of startups more you know in other areas um, like consumer internet uh, we are not looking into right so we yeah we, we talk to the startups we look into their pitch decks um, and we want to understand you know is this a good financial investment and a strategic fit um, we are a very technology heavy company. I mean, our, you know, our claim is invented for life. It's all about technology. But eventually we look and invest for invest in the, the, the best teams because at the end, it's all about having the best teams. And, and that's also not very easy to describe. There are a lot of, you know, um, different angles to this people who can pull it off, who can really build this company, who have the right business understanding. But also, and this is very, I think, special for quantum computing, having also the, you know, the pedigree and the experience um, and quantum computing, uh, you know, science, science hungry field, I would say. Um, you need, you know, you need really experts, the best people to to make the company successful. But first of all, you know, the first indicator, the first criteria for us is, do we think that this team can pull it off? And then we follow with things like, um, you know, is the technology unique? Um, is the market there? Is the market big enough? Is the market like there now or maybe in five years or in 10 years? Because you can be also too early as a startup. It's very, very, very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, quantum computing is a nascent industry, um, a new technology, a nascent in industry. Um, and it must have been different to, to try to assess quantum computing startups. Um, did your physics background help you in any way, in particular way for, for looking into quantum computing start, startups? As, as I already mentioned, so um, investing in quantum is actually a little bit different than in others because it's even more important to invest, you know, in the right teams um, with, you know, the, the background and also with the capability to attract other young next generation quantum scientists to join the team, right? Um, the thing is with quantum is that quantum physicists are around actually. So we talk to almost every startup in this particular field. And we really had to understand, you know, besides the team, what is their technology? What makes them, you know, special? Why do we think that they can pull it off? Um, and I mean, I'm an experimental physicist, not a theoretical physicist, but still, um, I mean, when we talk to, to Zapata Computing and to other startups, I actually felt the first time in my life, maybe my undergraduate studies in like quantum mechanics actually are worth something because, you know, in other business areas, it's not so important. Um, but this was, I mean, I still felt like very humbled and kind of like, stupid because it's really hard to understand what you know quantum physicists in these quantum computing startups are doing but at least you know i had a kind of an idea what's going on there um so this was the investment potential um another thing is from a company-wide perspective what seems promising or exciting about quantum technology and, and how do you see a good fit for your uh, business units and how they can, can potentially work um, with quantum in the future? Um, 
So, I mean, quantum computing for us falls probably under the umbrella of what we call next generation computing. You know, what new computing are out there. Um, and so since we are a technology company or Bosch is a technology company, um, it's all about, you know, next generation technology and computing is a part of it. Um, and when you, you know, read the tech news today, it's all about data centers, high performance computing, cloud computing. Um, there's like so much data around, you know, people collect like personal data with their phones, with their cars, with their wristwatches. Um, enterprises are collecting data on and on. And to analyze this all, that's really a big, big task, right? And the second a new computer is on the market, it's like overloaded with the demand of, of what is possible to calculate to, on this computer. And I mean, and for example, optimization, you know, tasks. Um, even today, you know, the best computers are probably running for hours and days, you know, to solve some very, very, very complicated problems. Um, and it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's mind blowing, right? Because I mean, with your laptop computer or your smartphone, you think you're good, but there are still these huge problems to solve. This, this uh, a huge amount of data and quantum computing, like this is the promise of quantum computing to solve problems you cannot solve today, like within, you know, instantaneously, like with a switch of a light switch or something, it's like, it's it's incredible. It's very very tempting to to try this, right? Um, we don't know 100% this will work out. We all know that it's really a lot of infrastructure around to build a quantum computing, right? But um, the promise about or the promise of quantum computing to discover new materials, to solve large optimization problems, to help with machine learning. The potential is so big, it's so disruptive that, um, yeah, that also Bosch is looking into this area and whether this can, you know, can help our corporation and also other corporations to, you know, to go to the next level to invent new things. I mean, that's, that's just mind blowing. Yeah. It really is. Thank you. I see that we have um, a many, many good questions already coming in. Um, so I think I'm going to spend the next six minutes trying to, to look through all the, the questions that we have in our chat window. One of them were um, which countries you are focused on um, investing in, if there's any like particular um, focus on, on in globally where you're looking more into one region than, than others. Yeah, so actually we have a global team. Um, so we have um, people here in North America and I'm part of the North American team and we are responsible for investments in US and Canada. We have a team in Europe. Um, we have a team in Israel and in China. So we are in many, many regions in the world, not in every region, but in, we are almost covering the whole globe with our teams and investments. Yeah. Okay. We have another question that kind of fits well with, with um, the previous one. Um, from the US VC point of view, what do you think of Europe VC in quantum technologies? Um, I mean, there are strong investors in Europe as well. Um, um, and, you know, we talked to Pitango, Atomico, um, Amadeus. I mean, there's some, some very strong, very also technology like focused um, and heavy VCs and, and we are also co-investors with some of them. So, I mean, there's overall, I think in, it's more difficult in Europe to get funding, um, but I don't see a difference in quantum in particular. So I think the chances for, you know, a European quantum computing startup are also great. Yes, and with because, the more than 2,000... Oh, no, sorry, no because also there's there's a lot of, you know, 
scientific research going on also in Europe, right? And there are some tech heavy investors as well, and they can they understand this. So I think we are good. Yeah. There. Okay. And with the more than 2,000 assessments that you're doing every year, I, I bet that some of them are based in, in, in Europe as well. Um, someone is asking, um, with, with all of those assess assessments per year, um, how large is your team? And um, are there any tools you use to help manage this funnel of targets? So we have um, around 20 investors worldwide, and it's all public on our homepage. Um, and... So in average, everyone is probably, you know, only um, checking out like 100 companies a year. I think I do more, at, at least it feels like more. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's all about, you know, narrowing this funnel from, you know, what's out there to, to talk to the companies or sometimes even only, you know, reading the pitch decks. Um, and for the more, more, more interesting ones, also discussing them with the business um, units, um, whether they are interested, and finally, um, you know, investing. Um, and as I said, when we actually eventually invest in a startup, then we also, you know, we look very, very closely into the financials and into the into the potential in the future. Um, so, there was a follow up question to that um, regarding your team. Um, how many are looking at quantum in particular? Um, you must be looking at a wide range of, of industries. Yeah. yeah, so actually, and use everything. Um, we don't have like experts in our team, but for quantum, it's in so far a little bit special that I have like one colleague in Germany who was really, really um, tempted to look into quantum computing. So he did the kind of study about, you know, um, the market and also about all the startups around. Um, so there are probably currently like two or three investors in our 20 investors teams who are like closer to quantum computing. And for me, it became, you know, because I was in US, I, my background was physics. This actually helped. Um, and I was like, I was so tempted because when I was very, very short story, when I was like an, an under, no, um, um, a graduate student, I went to a conference and I, I will always remember that this lady, um, this was actually also a women's conference. This was lady was extending me a quantum computer with like two qubits or one qubit. And I was like, this will never come true in my lifetime. And now we have quantum computers existing. So when I heard this, I was like so excited. I had to go into that, look into that space. Yeah. Thank you. We only have one minute left. So I think we have to wrap up this session. Um, but thank you so much, Yvonne, for, for joining me in this conversation.